Serving 34 stations and moving 67 million passengers every year, the Metropolitan Line stretches from Amersham in Buckinghamshire to the heart of the City of London. The difference between the A stock and the S stock is pretty huge. For the last 50 of those years, the line has been served by A stock trains, but now their time is coming to an end. For now, I'm enjoying the last few weeks of getting to drive a proper old train, as we all think of it. By the end of summer 2012, all A-stop trains will have been replaced by the new S-stop. So we followed around driver Richard Griffin for a day, halfway during the rollout point of the new trains, to see the differences between the old and the new. It's April 2012, and at Harrow on the Hill, on the Metropolitan Line, train operator Richard Griffin is booking on for another day's shift of driving. Richard doesn't know himself until his train, 451, rolls into the platform if it's going to be one of the new or much loved older A stop trains. Watford service about to depart. Please stand clear. The new S-stock trains have slowly been rolling out to the line, replacing the older A-stock trains, and it's at the point now when it's 50-50 as to which type of train Richard gets to drive. Richard explains why he is so fond of the A-stock. I do like the old trains. Uh, what you see is what you get. They're solidly built, they're made of aluminium and cast iron, and uh, you can hear as they work. It's not all operated by computer, it's operated by clunky great relays and uh, pneumatic pistons and if something goes wrong with it you can probably hear what's going wrong with it or see what's going wrong with it or even smell what's going wrong with it rather than just getting an error message on a computer screen. Uh, it's a very different way of working but it's a way that's served London well since the late 1930s in fact because these trains are an evolution of a design that started in 1935. A driver from 1935 getting into this train would immediately know exactly how to do it, how to drive it. Richard transferred to the Metropolitan Line, having previously been a train operator on the Jubilee. I guess I am a relatively young driver. I've still got quite a long career ahead of me, wherever that takes me. Uh, I'm one of the computer generation, certainly, and so the new trains don't hold a lot of fear for me. They're also quite similar to the Jubilee line trains, which I used to drive in a lot of ways. Uh, so I'm not finding it too hard to adapt. Uh, some of the older drivers who've driven these wonderful old trains for 35 of the last 50 years, they've spent their whole working lives on here, basically, and they don't know anything different. So it is a challenge for them to adapt. Although a driver, Richard is familiar with and fond of being a passenger on these trains too. This area here with the single doorway is where the guard used to stand. Uh, until one person operation came in, there was a position like this in every driving carriage. Here is where the relays are. The guard panel was here. And there was the seat for the guard and they've reused these with the seats that they leave in here. The new S-Stock train is very simple to open up. However, heavy spanner-like keys are required to open up the control and braking systems on the A-Stock and to change the head and tail lights. 
Even the destination blind is wound manually. The whole of Richard's morning's shift is on the same A-stock train. He takes time to explain some of the controls and gauges that are on board. The gauge here is called the duplex gauge. It shows you two air pressures that we're interested in. The higher one, which is the red needle, is the main reservoir pressure. That tells you how much air supply the train has got overall, and it's at about 80 pounds per square inch. The uh, other needle is the one that's critical for the Westinghouse brake. That's the train pipe or the train line. That's at 65. When the brakes are charged and released, that needle should always show about 65. <whistles> On the S-Stock, you have one needle which is showing you the main reservoir. And it also doesn't have numbers. It just has a green zone for correct, has a red zone for overcharging and an orange zone for undercharging. What do you think as you see that train? Well, it's a vision of the future. I don't know if it's a good vision of the future, but that's what we have. I'm sure in time, all of us on the Met will get thoroughly used to them, as we are doing really, because there are plenty of them about. But for now, I'm enjoying the last few weeks of getting to drive a proper old train, as we all think of them. The A-Stock is also one of the last few types of train on the network to have the Westinghouse brake system. The Westinghouse brake, it originates uh, as an invention by George Westinghouse in uh, 1872. It's known as an automatic brake because if anything goes wrong, if the train should become divided into two parts, the brakes will automatically apply. It was only in the 20s and 30s that the underground started to introduce an electrically controlled form of brake. Still uses the same brake blocks on the same sets of wheels, but the brake is actually controlled by an electrical circuit. And we have both on this train. You have the electrical brake called the EP brake, which is electro-pneumatic, but you also have the Westinghouse brake as a fail-safe. Modern trains don't have the Westinghouse brake because the fail-safe aspect of it has been replaced by electric circuits. So being able to practice using the Westinghouse brake is something that won't be possible once these trains are gone. There's a bit of an art to it because you can only add the brake little by little. You can't subtract just a little bit of brake. Once you've added as much as you want, that's it. When you throw it off, you really have to throw it all off. So it teaches you about judging the speed of the train and how much retardation you're applying. Driving the S-Dock is more straightforward. You've only got one type of control for the brake. Uh, all you can do is apply less or more and you can vary it at your, at your will, really. So it's not the same as on these trains where you've got two braking systems, both applying the same brake box, but two different methods of applying the same braking system. Richard demonstrates how to bring the train to a halt by just using the Westinghouse system. So we're coming down into Finchley Road. I'm going to use the Westinghouse brake. And how it works is we reduce the pressure in the train pipe and we do that by making a gentle application of the Westinghouse brake. So we throw the handle into lap and then we make an application and we feel the train just start to decelerate. We can make further applications like that and feel that retardation coming on. And I actually ended up with too much brake on there. So I've had to revert to the EP brake. It is always a challenge. As we're at Finchley Road, this is where we lower the flag switch. This improves the acceleration of the train but reduces the top speed. The next stop is Baker Street. This is an old gate train.
It's September 2012. Since April, more and more S-Stock trains have been introduced, and today is the last day in A-Stock will run in public passenger service. All gate service all stations to all gate train depart in about two to three minutes. The train has attracted a large number of people out for one last journey. I love these things. The new ones are really cool, but these ones have a real charm to them. I really love these trains. Yeah. What's, um, the, what's the difference between the old and the new ones? Um, well, from a technical standpoint, the old ones uh, have a much nicer kind of layout, I think. I like the benches, and I like the fact that it's in carriages. The new ones have the walkthrough, you can just walk straight through. These ones have a real kind of old world charm to them. They have the luggage racks, which are just yeah. adorable. The intrigue about these trains is they've been running for 51 years, and that is quite something in engineering terms. They do last a very, very long time, and it's a credit to uh, British engineering of the 60s, the fact that they have lasted this long. The train has a special headboard on it, and even the driver is aware of the significance of the journey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is North Station's Watford train, and that is the last time you'll hear this announcement on board a 1960s vintage A-stop train, basically serving the Metropolitan Line for half a century. This train is ready to depart by the closing doors. Even some of the regular passengers are getting on board with the spirit of it all. New trains, a bit better, more space, aircon. <laughs> Tweeted a picture as well, and that I was on the last train, so it was quite exciting. <laughs> After a trip up to Watford and back, the train terminates at Harrow on the Hill, and a large group of enthusiasts are there to see it off. And as for Richard, his closing thoughts go back to April, when he was still driving the A-Stock trains. The A-Stock has been around for just over 50 years and it's served London very well. Uh, inevitably, with the, you know, the price of progress, is we now have a modern air-conditioned computerised train that uh, it is easier to drive. Um, at the moment it feels a little bit soulless to us, I think. Uh, many of us still prefer good old trains that we're used to and that we've seen and known and loved and used for so many years. So yeah, everything moves on and uh, we'll have to wait and see whether these will serve London for 50 years. Only time will tell.